Hi, my name is Emily Fuller, and I am researching coat color inheritance of Labrador Retrievers. And I'm going to teach you about the Punnett Square and different facts about each coat color and how they are inherited from generation to generation. Okay, so on my first slide, there is basic coat color facts about um, the three coat colors, yellow, chocolate, and black. Black is the dominant color, and chocolate is the recessive. Chocolate is the rarest lab color. Most people think yellow is a totally different coat color, but it is actually the, inabil the inability to express the black or chocolate color. And this is determined by a second gene. Melanin is a cause for variation in all the different coat colors. Eumelanin is responsible for the black and the chocolate colors. And pheomelanin is the result for, is the cause of the yellow to red coat color in the yellow lab. With the second example, it's big B, little B, little B, little B, and that's a yellow dog because there's the homozygous E, little E. And with the yellow dogs, the color that, if this was a big E, the color that was determined by these two. Uh, would show up in their nose and their eyelids and their lips. So for this one, it would have originally been a black dog if there had not been a homozygous little E. And with the last example, everything is homozygous, uh, recessive, which means uh, the dog is going to be yellow and the nose and the lips are going to be chocolate. Are you guys following me so far? Yeah. yeah. So for our first activity, uh, I'm going to pass out popsicle sticks. On one side of one of the popsicle sticks, there is a big B, and on the other side, there's a little B. And there's another popsicle stick that you're going to get, and on that one, one side is a big E, and on the other side, there's a little B. These are going to re represent the two different genes that uh, make up the coat color of the dog. So this activity will teach you about the randomness of inheriting genes. And for this activity, you'll drop each of your pops popsicle sticks on your desk twice. And make sure you, you can record down um, what, you, what the results are on each of them on a piece of paper that you have probably the packet would work to. So go ahead and drop the popsicle stick on your desk twice, each one, and record what you get. Now you have your genotype for the color of your imaginary dog. Um, I'm going to record what each of you guys got, and at the end, it should show that there are going to be more black dogs. On my next slide, there's going to start the photographs. If you've written the phenotype down, you can go ahead and move on to the following two questions uh, with the genotype and how do you know. Raise your hand and tell me what you got for the first question. Kendia, yeah, is that yours first? Um, it's a yellow dog with brown lips and nose. And who wants to answer number three? Uh, because the genotype is, is all recessive alleles? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second slide with the second dog. And go ahead and answer the following three questions <coughs> with uh, this picture. There's four pictures in total, so for the third picture, here is the puppy, and this is our final dog. Uh, go ahead and answer 10, 11, and 12 for this picture. So that wraps up for the photographs, but we're going to do one more. Um, this one will be for Kenneth. He is a yellow lab, and I'll pull him out for you guys to answer the same questions. There's not questions on your packet for you to answer about him, but we'll talk about it verbally. This is Kenneth. I'll bring it right here if you guys can see him. And I'll go ahead and ask the first question. What is the phenotype of Kenneth? Anybody? John? Um, yellow skin to black nose. Yeah, this is a black nose one. Yeah. Okay, and there are <laughs> there are two possible genotypes for Kenneth, and I'll call on Alexis. Um, 
Big B, Little E, and two, I mean, Big B, Little B, and Little E, Little E, and then Big B, Big B, and two Little E's. Yeah, yes. great, good job. <laughs> All right, and for the how do you know, Henry? Uh, well, because this code's yellow, and so it can't, it has to be recessive in the second note, really. Mm -hmm. And then he's got the black note, so it has to have at least one dominant allele in the first. Right, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the Punnett square, and the Punnett square is used to uh, to predict the outcomes of different crosses. In this case, two Labrador retrievers. So with this one, we're just going to deal with the chocolate lab versus the black lab. And to start with this, we put down a little b here for the first allele, and a little b there for the second allele. And same goes for the second uh, dog for over here. So the first allele and the second. And to fill in the squares here, you just combine the two that form the corners or the sides of the square. So this one will be a big B for the dominant one and then little b for the recessive one. And in this case, they're all going to be exactly the same. So they're all going to be big B, little b. And what kind of dog does this produce? Black. Black dog. Black dog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and then from this, we can determine the phenotype ratio, and the phenotype ratio is how, how many different colors are produced here. And in this case, they're all black, so it's going to be 4 to 0 for this one, for the number of black versus the number of chocolate. And also, we can determine the genotype ratio, which is the different um, types of genotypes that are on the board. And here, they're all exactly the same. So again, it's gonna, it's gonna be zero to four to zero. For zero being big B, big B, and this one being big B, little b, and zero being little b, little b. So I'm gonna call on people to tell me where and what I'm gonna fill in. B, and then the last one is both little b. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and now we can determine the genotype and the phenotype ratio. So how many different colors of offspring are there? Two. There's two. So the phenotype ratio will be three to one. Three to one for three blacks and one chocolate. And then the genotype ratio, how many different genotypes do you guys see? One, 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 two, one, two, one. one to two to one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what color dog is this one? Brown. Brown. And what kind of what color is this one? Black. Yeah. Across the top, we're going to put as many different combinations of this that we can do. So what I like to do is, uh, I, in mathematics, when you learn how to FOIL, you do outside, inside, and all that. So I do uh, the first ones, and then the last one, and then the inside, and then the very far. So you put, and there's going to be four different combinations. So for the first one, it'll be little b, big E. So in these ones, there's only two different uh, genotypes. Who can tell me what'll go in the first box? Brina? Big B, little b, big E, big E. Yep, and what color dog is that? Black. Black. So based on this, who can tell me what the, how many different phenotypes there are? What two. There are two, and those two are? Black and chocolate. Black and chocolate. So the phenotype ratio will look like? One to one. One to one. And what gen genotype ratio does that give us? One to one. One to one. One to one. one, to one. <laughs> awesome. And the first key term is dominant. So I'll ask uh, John to answer what the definition of dominant is. It's master recessive gene. Yeah. Which color is dominant to which color? Uh, black, dominant to brown. Yeah. And then pheomelanin is the last one. And what is that one? Uh, uh, Nolan? Uh, is it the yellow color? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so you guys have all the key terms. Make sure you got copied down the ones that you didn't get during the presentation. And You'll turn that in as soon as we finish up with the review. So the next one is you guys can start on the review that's on the third page, and I'll give you guys time to do that. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out a teacher evaluation, 
and there's uh, just five questions. 